Welcome to Hydrohaven's comprehensive guide on one of the most powerful soil restoration techniques you can implement in your garden. If you're facing compacted, nutrient-depleted, or dead soil, you're about to discover how the dynamic duo of fava beans and potatoes can transform your growing space into a thriving ecosystem. If you're facing compacted, nutrient-depleted, or dead soil, you're about to discover how the dynamic duo of fava beans and potatoes can transform your growing space into a thriving ecosystem. As fellow gardeners on this journey towards sustainable growing, we've seen firsthand how strategic intercropping can revitalize even the most challenging soil conditions. This powerful combination doesn't just grow food, it rebuilds your soil from the ground up, creating the foundation for years of abundant harvests. As fellow gardeners on this journey towards sustainable growing, we've seen firsthand how strategic intercropping can revitalize even the most challenging soil conditions. This powerful combination doesn't just grow food, it rebuilds your soil from the ground up, creating the foundation for years of abundant harvests. The Soil Regeneration Power Couple Fava beans and potatoes might seem like an unlikely pairing, but their complementary growth habits and biological functions create a synergy that's particularly effective at breathing life back into degraded soil. Let's explore what makes this intercropping strategy so uniquely powerful. The Soil Regeneration Power Couple Fava beans and potatoes might seem like an unlikely pairing, but their complementary growth habits and biological functions create a synergy that's particularly effective at breathing life back into degraded soil. Let's explore what makes this intercropping strategy so uniquely powerful. Why fava beans? Fava beans, also known as broad beans, are nitrogen-fixing powerhouses. Their roots form symbiotic relationships with rhizobium bacteria, creating nodules that pull nitrogen from the air and convert it into forms plants can use. This process, called nitrogen fixation, is essentially free fertilizer generated right in your garden bed. Beyond nitrogen, fava beans offer several soil-building benefits. Their deep tap roots break through compacted soil layers, creating channels for water, air, and beneficial soil organisms to penetrate deeper. The extensive root systems help prevent erosion while adding organic matter as they decompose. Their abundant foliage provides green manure when chopped and dropped, and they produce generous amounts of biomass both above and below ground. They also exude specific compounds that make phosphorus more available to companion plants. When grown in dead soil, fava beans act as pioneers, establishing the conditions that allow other plants to thrive where they previously couldn't. Why fava beans? Fava beans, also known as broad beans, are nitrogen-fixing powerhouses. Their roots form symbiotic relationships with rhizobium bacteria, creating nodules that pull nitrogen from the air and convert it into forms plants can use. This process, called nitrogen fixation, is essentially free fertilizer generated right in your garden bed. Beyond nitrogen, fava beans offer several soil-building benefits. Their deep tap roots break through compacted soil layers, creating channels for water, air, and beneficial soil organisms to penetrate deeper. The extensive root systems help prevent erosion while adding organic matter as they decompose. Their abundant foliage provides green manure when chopped and dropped, and they produce generous amounts of biomass both above and below ground. They also exude specific compounds that make phosphorus more available to companion plants. When grown in dead soil, fava beans act as pioneers, establishing the conditions that allow other plants to thrive where they previously couldn't. Why potatoes? Potatoes complement fava beans perfectly in a soil regeneration system. Their growth habit naturally loosens and aerates soil as the tubers expand. They thrive in the slightly acidic soil conditions that often accompany depleted soils. The cultivation process, hilling, harvesting and replanting, naturally incorporates organic matter and improves soil structure. Their broad leaves quickly shade the soil, reducing erosion and moisture loss. They're relatively heavy feeders that benefit directly from the nitrogen provided by the fava beans. Potatoes essentially act as soil tillers, physically restructuring the growing medium while benefiting from the nutrients being made available by their legume companions. Why Fava Beans? Fava beans, also known as broad beans, are nitrogen-fixing powerhouses. Their roots form symbiotic relationships with rhizobium bacteria, creating nodules that pull nitrogen from the air and convert it into forms plants can use. This process, called nitrogen fixation, is essentially free fertilizer generated right in your garden bed. Beyond nitrogen, fava beans offer several soil-building benefits. Their deep tap roots break through compacted soil layers, creating channels for water, air, and beneficial soil organisms to penetrate deeper. The extensive root systems help prevent erosion while adding organic matter as they decompose. Their abundant foliage provides green manure when chopped and dropped, and they produce generous amounts of biomass, both above and below ground. 
they also exude specific compounds that make phosphorus more available to companion plants. When grown in dead soil, fava beans act as pioneers, establishing the conditions that allow other plants to thrive where they previously couldn't. Why potatoes? Potatoes complement fava beans perfectly in a soil regeneration system. Their growth habit naturally loosens and aerates soil as the tubers expand. They thrive in the slightly acidic soil conditions that often accompany depleted soils. The cultivation process, hilling, harvesting and replanting naturally incorporates organic matter and improves soil structure. Their broad leaves quickly shade the soil, reducing erosion and moisture loss. They're relatively heavy feeders that benefit directly from the nitrogen provided by the fava beans. Potatoes essentially act as soil tillers, physically restructuring the growing medium while benefiting from the nutrients being made available by their legume companions. The Science Behind Soil Death and Regeneration Before diving into implementation let's understand what dead soil actually means and how our intercropping approach addresses each aspect of soil health. Dead soil typically suffers from multiple issues. Depleted organic matter means soil lacks the food source needed to support microbial life. Collapsed soil structure occurs without the binding effects of fungal hyphae, root exudates and humus, causing soil particles to compact and reducing pore space for air and water. Microbial imbalance or absence decimates the soil food web. Bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes and arthropods, halting nutrient cycling. Mineral imbalances can form from years of improper fertilization or leaching, creating excesses or deficiencies of key minerals. Poor water infiltration and retention happens when compacted soil with low organic matter can't absorb or hold moisture effectively. The Science Behind Soil Death and Regeneration Before diving into implementation let's understand what dead soil actually means and how our intercropping approach addresses each aspect of soil health. Dead soil typically suffers from multiple issues. Depleted organic matter means soil lacks the food source needed to support microbial life. Collapsed soil structure occurs without the binding effects of fungal hyphae, root exudates and humus, causing soil particles to compact and reducing pore space for air and water. Microbial imbalance or absence decimates the soil food web. Bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes and arthropods, halting nutrient cycling. Mineral imbalances can form from years of improper fertilization or leaching, creating excesses or deficiencies of key minerals. Poor water infiltration and retention happens when compacted soil with low organic matter can't absorb or hold moisture effectively. The fava bean potato intercropping system addresses each of these issues. It rebuilds organic matter through continuous root exudates and plant residues. It restores soil structure through physical disruption, like potato growth and biological restructuring such as mycorrhizal associations with both plants. The system reintroduces microbial diversity by creating favorable habitats and food sources for beneficial organisms. It helps balance minerals through biological nutrient cycling and deep nutrient mining from subsoil, and it improves water dynamics by increasing soil porosity and water holding capacity. Implementation Guide – Setting up your intercropping system Now let's get practical about how to implement this system in your garden. Timing and Seasonal Considerations for temperate climates, fava beans and potatoes can be grown together starting in early spring. Fava beans tolerate light frost and can be planted as soon as the soil can be worked, typically four to six weeks before the last expected frost. Potatoes should be planted when soil temperatures reach at least 45 degrees Fahrenheit or 7 degrees Celsius. In warmer regions, this intercropping system works well as a fall or winter crop. Plant in autumn as temperatures cool for a spring harvest. For maximum soil building effect, consider implementing this system for two consecutive growing seasons before transitioning to other crops. Site preparation. Even dead soil requires some preparation. Clear the area of existing vegetation and debris. For severely compacted soil consider an initial light broad forking to create some initial aeration without disrupting soil layers. Add minimal amendments to jumpstart the process. A thin layer about 1 to 2 inches of compost will help establish the plants. But don't worry about extensive amendments, that's what your plants will do for you. Adjust pH if extremely off balance. While fava beans and potatoes can help balance soil over time, extreme pH issues below 5.0 or above 7.5 should be addressed minimally to ensure plant establishment. Use elemental sulfur to lower pH or agricultural lime to raise it. Consider a light mulch of straw or leaf matter to protect soil and add initial carbon. Planting Configuration The planting pattern matters significantly for maximizing the soil restoration benefits. Create wide rows or beds approximately 3 to 4 feet wide to allow easy access without compacting the growing area. 
plant potato seed pieces about 12 inches apart in rows spaced 30 to 36 inches apart, placing them 4 to 6 inches deep. Sow fava bean seeds in double rows between potato rows, spacing seeds about 6 to 8 inches apart with 8 to 10 inches between the double rows. Plant seeds 1 to 2 inches deep, ensure good seed to soil contact for both crops by firming the soil gently after planting. The goal is to create a polyculture where the two plants interact while giving each enough space to thrive. This spacing allows fava beans to fix maximum nitrogen while potato plants can be hilled without disturbing the fava beans. Maintenance and ongoing care. This intercropping system requires less maintenance than conventional gardening, but some care will maximize its soil building potential. Water deeply but infrequently to encourage deep root growth from both plants. This helps break up compaction and draws nutrients from lower soil profiles. Mulch between plants once they're established to suppress weeds, conserve moisture and add organic matter. Use straw, partially decomposed leaves, or chemical-free grass clippings. The planting pattern matters significantly for maximizing the soil restoration benefits. Create wide rows or beds approximately 3 to 4 feet wide to allow easy access without compacting the growing area. Plant potato seed pieces about 12 inches apart in rows, spaced 30 to 36 inches apart, placing them 4 to 6 inches deep. Sow fava bean seeds in double rows between potato rows, spacing seeds about 6 to 8 inches apart with 8 to 10 inches between the double rows. Plant seeds 1 to 2 inches deep. Ensure good seed to soil contact for both crops by firming the soil gently after planting. The goal is to create a polyculture where the two plants interact while giving each enough space to thrive. This spacing allows fava beans to fix maximum nitrogen while potato plants can be hilled without disturbing the fava beans. This intercropping system requires less maintenance than conventional gardening, but some care will maximize its soil building potential. Water deeply but infrequently to encourage deep root growth from both plants. This helps break up compaction and draws nutrients from lower soil profiles. Mulch between plants once they're established to suppress weeds, conserve moisture and add organic matter. Use straw, partially decomposed leaves or chemical-free grass clippings. As potatoes grow, gently hill soil around them, being careful not to disturb fava bean roots. The soil disturbance from hilling potatoes actually benefits the overall system by aerating soil and stimulating microbial activity. Watch for pest issues but know that this diverse planting naturally reduces many common problems. Fava beans often attract beneficial insects that help manage potato pests. When fava beans begin flowering, consider cutting back about a third of the plants and leaving the trimmed material as mulch. This chop and drop technique accelerates nitrogen release into the soil for the potatoes benefit during their critical tuber formation stage. Allow the remaining fava beans to continue growing alongside the potatoes. The way you harvest can further enhance soil benefits. Harvest mature fava beans from some plants while leaving others to complete their full life cycle. Some gardeners harvest the tender young leaves and shoots of fava plants as nutritious greens, which also stimulates more growth. When harvesting potatoes rather than pulling entire plants, you can practice bandicooting, carefully digging mature tubers while leaving the plant intact to produce more potatoes. This maintains living roots in the soil for longer. At season's end, instead of removing all plant material, chop stems and leaves of both plants and leave them on the surface as mulch. The fava bean roots are particularly valuable. Leave them in the soil where their nitrogen-filled nodules will continue to enrich the soil as they decompose. After one or two seasons of this intensive soil building system, your once dead soil will show remarkable improvement. The transformation will be visible in darker soil color, improved tilth, and abundant soil life. Earthworms previously absent will likely appear as soil conditions improve. When transitioning to other crops, avoid heavy digging that would disrupt the newly established soil food web. Instead, use minimal till methods to preserve soil structure. The rejuvenated soil will be ready for a wide range of crops, particularly greens and heavy feeders that will benefit from the enhanced nitrogen and mineral content. Consider maintaining some legumes in your rotation to continue the nitrogen building benefits, or implement cover cropping between food crops to maintain soil health. As potatoes grow, gently hill soil around them, being careful not to disturb fava bean roots. The soil disturbance from hilling potatoes actually benefits the overall system by aerating soil and stimulating microbial activity. Watch for pest issues but know that this diverse planting naturally reduces many common problems. Fava beans often attract beneficial insects that help manage potato pests. When fava beans begin flowering, consider cutting back about a third of the plants and leaving the trimmed material as mulch. This chop and drop technique accelerates nitrogen release into the soil for the potatoes benefit during their critical tuber formation stage. Allow the remaining fava beans to continue growing alongside the potatoes. 
The way you harvest can further enhance soil benefits. Harvest mature fava beans from some plants while leaving others to complete their full life cycle. Some gardeners harvest the tender young leaves and shoots of fava plants as nutritious greens, which also stimulates more growth. When harvesting potatoes rather than pulling entire plants you can practice bandicooting, carefully digging mature tubers while leaving the plant intact to produce more potatoes. This maintains living roots in the soil for longer. At season's end instead of removing all plant material, chop stems and leaves of both plants and leave them on the surface as mulch. The fava bean roots are particularly valuable. Leave them in the soil where their nitrogen-filled nodules will continue to enrich the soil as they decompose. After one or two seasons of this intensive soil building system, your once dead soil will show remarkable improvement. The transformation will be visible in darker soil color, improved tilth, and abundant soil life. Earthworms previously absent will likely appear as soil conditions improve. When transitioning to other crops avoid heavy digging that would disrupt the newly established soil food web. Instead, use minimal till methods to preserve soil structure. The rejuvenated soil will be ready for a wide range of crops, particularly greens and heavy feeders that will benefit from the enhanced nitrogen and mineral content. Consider maintaining some legumes in your rotation to continue the nitrogen building benefits, or implement cover cropping between food crops to maintain soil health. Gardeners implementing this system typically report several observable changes within the first growing season. Soil that was previously hard and crusty begins to crumble more easily. Water infiltration improves dramatically, with less runoff and puddling during rain events. Plant vigor increases noticeably as the season progresses, with deeper green foliage indicating improved nitrogen uptake. By the end of the first season, you'll likely harvest respectable yields of both fava beans and potatoes, but the real prize is what's happening below ground. After the second season, most gardeners find their soil unrecognizable from its starting condition. The dark, crumbly texture, earthy smell, and visible soil life indicators, castings, fungal hyphae, signal the return of a living soil ecosystem. This intercropping system does more than improve your garden, it contributes to broader environmental health. Restoring soil carbon is a powerful climate action, as healthy soil sequesters carbon from the atmosphere, improved water infiltration reduces runoff and erosion, protecting local waterways. Reduced need for external inputs lowers the carbon footprint of your garden. By rebuilding soil health locally, you're participating in a global movement to restore degraded soils, one of our most critical and endangered resources. The fava bean and potato intercropping method represents gardening as it should be, regenerative rather than extractive, building resources rather than depleting them, and creating systems that improve with time rather than requiring increasing intervention. Thank you for joining us at Hydrohaven in this exploration of regenerative growing techniques. If you found this guide helpful, please subscribe to our channel for more in-depth gardening content and share this video with fellow gardeners who might be struggling with poor soil conditions. Remember, dead soil can be reborn, and you have the knowledge to make it happen. Happy growing!